What's up, everybody? It's Soren Baker here on Unique Access Entertainment. As always, please hit that subscribe button. It's right down there, and it's free. That enables us to keep Coney all as often as possible with as many interviews as possible, episodes of The Great Debaters as possible, and as many of these first and 15th as possible. So please hit that subscribe button, like, share our content, talk about it, be about it, each one, teach one. And while you're there, of course, we've got three tiers. You can support us by becoming a member and joining Unique Access Entertainment. So please, please, please do some or all of those things to really help us. Now today, on the 1st and 15th, I'm excited because a lot of people back, uh, I did this one a while ago, is the Bay too different. And one thing that I get inspiration from a lot of areas and one of the things I realized with the Bay being too different, there was always another city that to me was similar and analogous to what the Bay was going through. So definitely check that link is the bay area too different if you haven't already but today it's going to be all about chicago is chicago too different for its own good and by that i mean did chicago artists did chicago movements did chicago throughout the history of rap not become more successful not become more dominant because the chicago artists are just too diverse too good and are too powerful and didn't have a movement or a specific sound like some of the other cities that were famous for like new york has its own thing going but then la of course is gangster rap houston has its sound that it's usually synonymous with similar with miami a lot of the bigger rap cities do but chicago is an interesting case study now if you go back to the 80s for me, you know, coming up in Maryland, the first Chicago person that I really knew of, that I really paid attention to or heard of was Mr. Lee. Now, he, of course, is hip house, had a lot of house elements. Get Busy was the big song that I remember early, the earliest one I remember. And of course, he had had singles out before that. But in Maryland, that's the first one I remember really resonating with me. Then he got with Jive Records and had some success there. But jive of course also signed r kelly later so jive definitely was in the streets of chicago looking for talent but mr lee didn't usher in this big wave of rappers right away but it did at least let me know there was some great artists that were most likely going to be coming from chicago because it's a major city and it's got too much talent as we're about to discuss and get through now the two main talents that i saw early in the game of course were common and twister who at least especially earlier in their careers tongue twister had the guinness book of world records as tongue twister rapping so fast and just being phenomenal in that regard and then common was much more of a quote-unquote new york type of rapper and from his uh the way he presented himself the beats he chose all that different type of stuff um and for those reasons, you had this guy that was rapping super fast, and then you had a dude that, you know, if you had to compare him to something, it would be he was more in line with what a lot of the New York artists were doing, which wasn't that unusual at the time for artists that were not uh, from, say, Miami with the two live crew doing what they were doing, but in LA with gangster rap in particular in the late 80s, early 90s, as we're getting into this introduction of Common and Twister. Then of course, on the underground side, Juice was making moves a little bit later and getting known and, and breaking through to that degree. But to me, Chicago really exploded and got known for what really to me was the defining sound of Chicago, which to me was spearheaded, heralded, produced, and anchored by the legendary Traxter good friend of mine good friend of the channel check out my interviews with legendary trackster if you haven't already he produced a lot of the great stuff from do or die from the snipers psychodrama and of course twister who re-emerged as part of this wave of artists from the west side of chicago and they were very gangster and all this other stuff and of course crucial conflict who were not produced by trackster but also were in the same time frame were coming out with hay and just did a lot of great stuff. And I mentioned Gangster, of course. I mentioned a lot of these groups in my book, The History of Gangster Rap. Definitely, you know, there's a link below to check it out if you haven't already. But the reality is a lot of these dudes were rapping about the Chicago gangs and rapping about it in a different way than what we had become used to by the 
uh, mid 1990s from the California rappers who focused, of course, on the reality of the Bloods and the Crips. Dudes in Chicago were representing what was going on in Chicago uh, at the time and still is, of course. And to me, you had this, you know, Chicago is known for house music. Chicago has Common, who's decidedly not gangster, decidedly not uh, super rapid fire like Twister or Do or Die, for that matter, or Snipers. And then you have uh, this explosion that happens in the mid 90s that really happens and gets Chicago on the map. But again, this isn't, it does lead to a wave of all these artists getting deals, you know, do or die, of course, on rap a lot, snipers on rap a lot, psychodrama with Swap House and Twister with Atlantic through Creators Way associated labels, but, um, and Crucial Conflict uh, being through Universal through Palace initially, you know, all these groups had this movement and had this momentum or going gold having a lot of success twister of course comes out in 98 with the speed not mobsters mob stability album but the other thing that's also going on that kind of gets to my point is chicago too diverse and too good for its own good as far as this big movement type of thing that happens and leads to such uh, dominance and prominence from a city for a specific period of time is then you have the brat uh coming out and of course you know, breaking through, thank you, in large degree to Jermaine Dupri. But then you got someone like E.C. Ella making moves on the underground. Infamous Syndicate was making it happen. They were on Relativity at the time. And of course, from Infamous Syndicate, we also get Shauna, who, you know, really gets popular later as a solo artist through her work with Ludacris and Disturbing the Peace. You got No ID, who emerges as a rapper and, of course, as a great producer. We got Rhyme Fest coming out and we got Children of the Ghetto. So all these things are happening uh, and emerging and developing. But if we just look at the Brat, that's a female uh, commercial minded hit making uh, rapper that looks like and dresses like a gangster rapper. And people said the female Snoop Dogg in a lot of ways, but her music was decidedly, you know, it's Jermaine Dupri. So it's very commercial minded. It's very radio friendly a lot of it and it's functified so you know it had a lot of appeal to it ec illa's making this hardcore he's from the north side of chicago he's making hardcore independent hip-hop boom bap stuff early in his career infamous syndicate uh once we get to the late 90s they're doing a lot of like lyrical miracle rap but also female stuff so it's just it's just an interesting thing. No ID's also on Relativity. He had the Black Album, uh, obviously years before Jay-Z, but as a rapper producer, he had that out. You know, Children of the Ghetto signed with Mac-10, so they're on Who Bangin' coming out in the late 90s. Ron Fest emerges too. And then we get the next real wave, uh, which of course aligns with the emergence of Kanye West. And you know, of course, Chicago is known for the South Side and the West Side, and Chicago, uh, Kanye representing the South Side, like Common, but Kanye really changes the game again because he's initially getting in as a producer, then he becomes a rapper, and then his whole thing is Rockefeller, which is a New York-based label, and not in Chicago, and this leads to a lot of obviously immense success for Kanye that continues till today. But again, this is not the sound that's quote unquote, the streets of Chicago. This is something from, you know, that Kanye created kind of a, a one man machine that has led to his brilliant musical catalog and a lot of his successes, but it's just not quote unquote, the sound of Chicago. But what we get soon thereafter or I would argue is what would later become the sound and the movement of Chicago, the Chief Keefs, the Little Dirks, the G Erbos. To me, that's what this is really about. And the movement and the sound of Chicago is more of this street gangster rap, the drill music, hardcore type of stuff that those three artists really help bring uh, to the forefront. And that still remains till today. Of course, we have Lupe Fiasco, Chance the Rapper, different artists that are coming out being super uh, lyrical with Lupe, enjoying some success, being on a major label uh, at the time with Atlantic at, when he was first getting known, Chance the Rapper, obviously being hugely successful. 
and being a positive dude and getting acclaim for his lyrics as well and his vision and then we got uh, on the female side of things no name and then friend of the channel freddie old soul you can check out my interviews with freddie there but again this is other than the drill music which i would argue is what helped put the stamp on chicago but that's decades into the game from the 80s with mr lee and later on or soon thereafter with common and twister it's not until you know decades later that chicago i would argue had a specific sound that was synonymous with the city even though i would also argue in the 90s that sound was the legendary trackster sound that we got with the door dies with the snipers with the psychodramas with the twisters it's just that that sound remained a, a gold maximum sound it didn't translate into multi-platinum it also didn't translate into dozens of artists getting signed it didn't translate into a bigger musical movement so on the one hand i definitely want to get your opinion in the comments definitely hit me there let me know what you think you know why didn't chicago have the 30 artists that came out in the mid 1990s i have my own theories primarily and mainly because since rap is largely regional and definitely xenophobic as far as where the labels are being primarily in new york and secondarily in los, los angeles chicago being and creating and having some of the best rappers in the history of the game sadly those a and r's working at the different labels in the different cities the chicago music by and large didn't resonate with them so they despite the brilliance of common despite the brilliance of twister despite the brilliance of do or die despite <laughs> the brilliance of crucial conflict all of whom had tremendous success selling hundreds of thousands and millions of units uh individually and collectively that didn't lead to this wave this avalanche of artists and that's something that I've always been curious about. And I think it's mainly because the labels weren't there. And then the labels that were in New York and Los Angeles that were having huge success, they didn't, for whatever reason, invest in Chicago the same way that we see that they did later. And then, of course, is that also on the artists? They didn't have the business savvy. They didn't have the entrepreneurial spirit. I don't know. But I would argue that's probably also part of it and then timing, bad luck, etc., what have you. But as I listed off, of course, I named 20 or 30 artists, and that's just a fraction of the great artists from Chicago. But when you realize that so many things have to go right in any form of any type of business, and especially in the entertainment industry and in the music business in particular, you need a lot of things to happen and to happen at the same time in order to have this break out huge success because it's just very hard very very hard and now as time goes on it's easier than ever to make and record music and to release it to the public but then it's harder and harder to get traction and to become an artist that people know about care about and will support financially to where the artist can make that their living it's harder and harder to do it despite it being easier and easier to make the music recorded and release it so Anyway, those are my thoughts on Chicago. Is Chicago too different for its own good? I would argue yes, but please hit me in the comment section as always, as I ask you to do every time here on the 1st and 15th, because I'm always very interested and appreciate the insight and perspective that you provide. So definitely hit, just hit us up in the comment section, like, subscribe, join to Unique Access, and check me out Sor at Soren Baker on all social media. As I said, I mentioned Chicago gangster rap in my book, The History of Gangster Rap. And if you haven't picked it up, I also talk about Chicago because Juicy J uh, had some success in Chicago, of course, and did a lot of uh, shows and appearances and stuff in Chicago over the years with 3-6 Mafia and it was on his own. So check out Chronicles of the Juice Man book that I did with him as well. And definitely check us out on the 1st and 15th here on Unique Access Entertainment. Appreciate the support.